families moved from other geographic areas that have experienced what a children's museum, what a hands-on um, ability for kids to um, learn about, whether it's art, music, technology, science in a format that is comfortable for them to just explore and play. So learning through play is what our goal is about. Um, so we started our organization, formed our nonprofit status as a 501c3, have been supported for the last couple of years with um, in-kind donations from small businesses like Paula, who has helped us a lot, um, from our family members and friends who have given what they can to help us do what we have done to date. We've participated in a lot of community events like Stepping Out and Farmers Market Days and Summer Solstice. Um, we want to make this a permanent community fixture. Um, we know that our community can support it. Um, we've certainly talked to a lot of other museum representatives from around the country who are in the state where we are, where they're emerging, um, as well as established museums. And it has absolutely been um, proven that children's museums are sparks in economic development in communities. We know for a fact that the first of Maine businesses prospered from our event. Um, it was clear from friends that we spoke with and <clears throat> speaking with the businesses after that their lunch crowds were bigger, people lingered, we hung out for, to celebrate, <laughs> see go to Mayo afterward, you know, so um, it, it absolutely can help our community grow. Um, it, it hopefully will encourage people to stay in our community and fall in love with Blacksburg as we have. Um, which, of course, we will be here whether or not there's a children's museum, but we hope that more people will want to live here um, and be encouraged by what our community can represent. So, we're inspired. We're inspired by this TED Talk, and we hope to have um, a permanent picture in the future. My name is Beth Bowman, and I'm representing the New River Valley Bicycle Association and the wider uh, bicycle community. Um, and as is traditional, I don't read directions, and I um, am unconventional, and I'm the only one who did a PowerPoint. So, um, but anybody who knows me knows that that's pretty far for the course. Um, so I was going to talk today about bicycling and our building community through cycling. Uh, that particular um, tagline comes from the NRVDA. We did a little bit of rebranding a couple of years ago to try to uh, capture what it is that we were trying to do with the community uh, through cycling. Um, the word community was really important to us because um, it, it, it meant different things to different people. It uh, meant uh, partnerships, it meant interactions, introductions, it meant uh, social engagement, uh, synergy on projects. So. Um, so those are the types of things that we're trying to convey with that tagline that we were that we were doing. Um, a lot of people, like Jason uh, Robert said in his talk, they like to say that I'm the bicycling advocate for Blacksburg. Um, so people send people to me all the time, but uh, it's not really true. It, like uh, John said just a little while ago, it takes a whole community. It takes a lot of people to make things happen in the community. So what I'd like to do for the next couple of minutes is just introduce you to the people in the community who have been doing some really great things uh, to promote the cycling culture and to promote community just in general. Um, the first person that I'd like to introduce to you guys, um, a lot of these folks that you're going to see on the screen, I'm sure you've come across in your day-to-day uh, -day travels or day-to-day -day experiences at the market or whatever. Uh, this is Keith Moore. Uh, he works at Virginia Tech. Uh, for the past couple of years, he's been the chair of the corridor committee, which is a citizen-appointed uh, committee in, in town. Uh, that uh, advises town staff on uh, sidewalks, greenways, um, bicycle paths, bicycle accommodations. Um, in 2009, uh, I met Keith. Uh, he had started making, he had started a petition uh, because uh, there, there was some uh, dissatisfaction with the way that the North Main project uh, came about uh, without bicycle accommodations. Um, and it's really interesting that that petition actually kind of spawned a lot of things that are still ongoing right now. Um, and so through Keith, I got involved in the corridor committee. We kind of started walking down this path of a master plan, uh, bicycle master plan development process for the town of Blacksburg, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about. Um, while I'm 
meeting Keith, I'm meeting all kinds of other people still in town. This is Spencer Riddle, who's here in the audience today. Um, I a picture of Spencer in a cyclocross event, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in a second. Um, Spencer is uh, a GIS specialist, um, and uh, he's a cyclist. And Spencer, my relationship with Spencer is a lot by email. We uh, email back and forth, and we're always, uh, I'm like, Spencer, we're getting ready to do this. Do you have any ideas? And he throws a bunch of ideas back at me, and then uh, he'll be working on something, and he'll say, hey, what do you think about this? And I'll throw ideas back at him. And we see each other around town, we wave and stuff like that, but it's really an email relationship, isn't it, Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so um, Spencer uh, introduced me to these two guys. Um, this is Peter Sorsa and uh, Thomas Dickerson, and Thomas is here today. Uh, sitting back there in the back very quietly. And uh, these two guys work for the Center for Geospatial Information and Technology. Um, <coughs> when we started developing the master bike plan, um, we needed data. We needed to know what people were doing in order to plan around that. Uh, so we had done some bicycle counts in our PBA and the corridor committee had gotten about 50 volunteers together. And we picked four locations randomly around town and we counted bicycles for 12 hours on a Wednesday and four hours on a Saturday. And we said, well, this is good data, but we, we don't know if this is really where people are riding. And so um, the, the Center for Geospatial Information and Technology, these two guys, Peter and Thomas, came over and they said, hey, we'll help you out. Uh, we'll, we'll throw some pro bono work to the town. And design, they designed an interactive uh, web-based survey uh, that people could go on and plot their uh, bicycle trips around town. And so they compiled that data and that helped us say, yes, you know, this is confirming that this is where we think people are riding and this is where they're telling us that they're riding. So that information is really helpful um, in building the plan. Then we started getting into the plan and we were talking to people, what, what do you want? Uh, we had about 60 or 70 people, volunteers from the community, uh, to get involved in the, uh, in the master plan development process over the last year and a half. Um, I, I put three pictures of the 70 people or so up here. This is Janet Rankin on the left. She's a, a professor at Virginia Tech. Um, anytime we need volunteers to go out and count bikes or to do to draft things or to review things or comment on things, she's always there. Uh, the middle picture is George Simmons. He's a biology professor at Virginia Tech. Um, he was featured in a two-page spread in the Carillion Living Clinic, uh, magazine recently. Um, he drives a VT bus. He doesn't own a car. Uh, if, anytime he needs uh, people to count bikes, help you uh, make decisions about uh, uh, what kind of bicycle accommodation, George is there. Um, and then Kim Homer, she's a real inspiration. Uh, she just finished an ultra marathon, I think, a couple weeks ago. Um, her daughter rides uh, her bicycle from Blacksburg to the Christian to Christiansburg to go to the middle school um, almost every day. Um, and Kim makes the morning trip with her, her daughter makes the trip back in the evening. So it, just, you know, regular folks in the community um, helping out wherever they can. Without those 70 people, we wouldn't have a master plan, uh, which we hope to present to the public here in the next uh, two months. Right, Karen? <laughs> so, um, Adam Lind, um, this is how things work. Um, we've been working for about a year on this master plan process. Uh, and. Uh, Dean, called, Dean Crane, who I'm going to talk about in a second, calls us up, the corridor committee reps, and says, I've got this young guy, he, he says he wants to help, he wants experience with helping with master plan development. We said, sure. So we sat down with Adam. Adam had some really fantastic mapping skills. Um, he's, he was an urban planning student, graduate student at Tech. Um, he ended up doing a tremendous amount of work. And, and he approached us. He decided he wanted to get involved. Uh, he came to us and we said, sure, yeah, we'll take your help. And he ended up being the guy who stitched the plan together at, in the end. So without Adam, we wouldn't have a plan to present to the public in a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> this is Priscilla Gildick. She's the Assistant Public Works Director for the town of Blacksburg. Uh, Priscilla uh, came to Blacksburg a couple of years ago, and she brings a wealth of knowledge to the town. Um, when we were out collecting data about um, about uh, uh, the number of cyclists who were doing bike counts. We have to be um, stationed at Price's Fork and Tom's Creek, where it crosses over into onto campus. We were counting bikes there on a, on a Wednesday in 2009. And 
the counters kept turning over and looking over their shoulder because they kept seeing more bicycles crossing over at Webb and Turner Streets. And Webb and Turner is now where we have the flashing beacon. Well, that whole design was uh, Priscilla's. We, we went to Priscilla and we said, you know what? People aren't using uh, Towns Creek and Standard because they don't feel comfortable there. They're using that crossing up there, and it's really wildly crazy because it was designed poorly. Can you do something about that? Well, the flashing beacon is what we have now, and I think that's a great solution uh, to that problem. <clears throat> the, the Huckleberry Trail, this is a great uh, thing where you've got public-private collaboration. Uh, <clears throat> that red segment there, the Huckleberry Trail, everybody knows the Huckleberry Trail. Uh, the town just received a $250,000 grant from DCR to construct the last segment, which will connect the Huckleberry Trail over to Gateway Park. That means you'll be able to go from Christiansburg all the way out to Pandapas on a bicycle. Uh, that's just an amazing thing, and, and a lot of individuals uh, came together to make that happen. All of that is about planning and advocacy and stuff that's going on in, in the neighborhood or in the community. You've got to have the encouragement. Um, so I want to introduce you to a couple of people in the community who are encouraging people to get out there and ride. This is Ann Thompson. Uh, if you've ever been to these coasters, you've probably been helped by Ann at some point in time. Ann owns a company called Tribe Venture uh, that she started up in 2005. Um, since 2005, she has helped 250 first-time triathletes compete their first triathlon. That's the only. Uh, that's only the first-time triathlete. Uh, she's helped a lot of other people improve their already great performances. Uh, she has a real big emphasis on getting kids involved in physical activity. Um, it's just a real great contribution to the community. This is Liz Hokinson. Liz is, uh, is on staff over at Virginia Tech in the Agricultural Department. Uh, she's been part of the NRVBA for a long time. Um, Liz is, has been responsible for organizing a couple of events that we do in the spring. Um, the one on the left there is uh, uh, what we call Fix Fest. So every April for the last couple of years, uh, we've invited the local bike shops to come out with their mechanics and um, do free tune-ups, uh, brakes, steering, pump up the tires, that kind of thing, for community members that want to get their bikes out of the garage, dust them off, and start riding them. Um, in May, we do a, um, during bike month, we do a hospitality station or an uh, energizer station. So we reward people who ride their bikes to work on or to school on a Friday morning. So they can stop by and get bolos, uh, coffee, and cakes, and things like that. Um, Cole Harden, another fixture in the community. Uh, Cole is hilarious. He makes me laugh. I love Cole. Uh, I, I love reading his emails uh, when he's uh, getting ready to, to do an event because they're very three-dimensional. They're very emotional. You can just feel the enthusiasm coming off the paper or off 